Pop OS 22.04 is released to us. You can download the long term support edition here on System76 website, get the standard version or the one for NVIDIA graphics cards with proprietary drivers. But let's talk about what's new in Pop 22.04. Take a look around and I'll tell you what I'm excited about coming to the future of Pop. First off, their installer is looking super fresh in dark mode. It's one of the things I love about Pop, how easy they make it for you to run through the steps. There's not a bunch of stuff you have to go through. The setup process is fairly easy with their installer. I'd venture to say one of the easiest of the installers for various different Linux distributions to use. And if you're new to Pop and you just got done installing it, you'll run through a wizard real quick. I love this wizard because you can set up the dock this way to make it look and feel how you want it on your desktop. You also get to set up a few things up top on various different display options. And it runs through a few more things, including selecting whether you want that light mode or the sweet dark mode that they have set up for you by default. Now, speaking about the installation process, some of you might be wondering what's required to run Pop! OS. It's four gigs of RAM, at least 16 gigs on your storage device, a 64 bit processor, and you're good to go. Most of us can meet those requirements fairly easily, but let's talk about what specifically is new here in Pop! OS 22.04. The desktop is still Cosmic Desktop, the GNOME based one. They have talked about releasing and are currently developing another Rust based desktop, also going to be called Cosmic, I presume, hopefully within the coming year. But if we check things out, we have GNOME version 42 running for now, and the default is the X11 windowing system. In the settings, you'll also notice two things here OS upgrade and recovery and support. So, what's new with these? Well, first off, we have a way to schedule when updates should occur. So here we go, automatically install once automatic updates are set and you can specify when. For example, if you are sleeping and you want the system to automatically update things, you can do this now by setting a scheduled automatic update, either on weekdays, a specific day and a specific time, or just do it whenever things are available. You can also Specify when you get those update notifications, how frequently below that. Pop! OS has always been user friendly and easy for me to use. That's why I suggest it to most beginners coming over to Linux. And another thing that was put in here is in the support tab under settings, you now have a section devoted to trying to help you out with Pop. It tells you model and version information, including what version of the operating system you're running. And then if you want to browse documentation directly on their website, by looking at supporting articles. You can also join a chat room to talk to other POP users and generate log files that will help others and yourself debug your system. Notice I have this tar.xz file. So that's an archive file with XZ compression. I can just pop this over, send it off to somebody, ask for help, and they've made this super easy to do. Don't have to interact with the terminal or anything. It's just there. I do like that feature that they've added. While we have a few things opened up, while we have a few things opened up right now, a couple windows, we'll go over and set tiling windows. Another favorite of Pop! OS. You don't have to stick with the standard desktop environment. You can turn on window tiling support, which allows you to become ever so efficient. Definitely play around with this. Maybe it works for you as well. And if you need help, you can always go back up to the tiling window manager icon and select shortcuts so you can see the various different shortcuts available here while using the pop shell window manager. I'm going to turn it off for now and let's talk audio. Pipewire is now the default here in pop OS 22.04. For those of you looking forward for better audio quality and configuration, well, it looks like pop OS has moved over to Pipewire to give us those We'll hit up the terminal and I'll just say from the terminal, you can always make the update to 22.04. If you're on something like 21.10, you might as well get yourself onto the long-term support edition since it's going to be here for a while. Let's look at some of the system resource usage using HTOP. This will show us what's going on with the current resource usage. We're going between zero and about 2% on the cores of the processor. Memory is around 1.45 gigs out of eight gigs. This is a little bit on the heavy side ever since GNOME 42 has been released. I've been noticing this across different distributions using GNOME. 
Where before it was around 800 gigs, I don't know why it's increased ever so much, but it has, I think that's significant. It's one thing to look at if you're going with the GNOME desktop environment, it's become a little heavier. Tasks are 109, 247 threads, and we've been up for about 12 minutes. A ton of processes running in the background, but let's look at the system information as well, which I'll do using NeoFetch. Here we have Pop OS 22.04, the long-term support edition. We have the 5.16 generic kernel. There's 1,767 source packages installed using GNOME 42 with the theme customized by Pop, as well as the icons. This is being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X with currently around 1.5 gigs out of 8 gigs of memory being used. So with GNOME 42, a few new updates to GTK apps. If we check out applications and we search for the screenshot tool, you can take a screenshot now and I like this new screenshot tool. Personally, it looks very modern. You have your dock at the bottom. You can select whatever you want on the screen to take a picture of. Or if instead you want the entire screen, you could select that as well. Or the current window selection if you have multiple windows open. You also have the ability to record the screen if you want or take away the pointer if necessary. And if you take a screenshot of the actual menu for the screenshot tool, it won't be actually shown in the picture. It's smart enough to recognize you're trying to take a picture of the background, not the tool itself. That's just one of the tools that have been updated with GNOME 42 on here. Pop Shop has also been improved a little bit. Nothing by the looks, more of just performance. So hopefully now when you're searching through the Pop Shop, trying to get the latest and greatest in packages, applications, what have you, you will install quicker, search quicker, and have a better experience using the shop. Let me know if you're excited and you're going to be downloading and installing Pop OS 22.04 in the comment section below. Let's briefly talk about the desktop here and just see if anything's changed. We still have the show launcher, show workspaces, show applications, the default web browsers, Firefox. You can get to your file browser, terminal, pop shop, and settings all from the bottom dock. Hitting workspaces gives you all your virtual workspaces that are available. Applications lets you scroll through some categories below of folders and then the specific applications inside those folders. You can also use the top to search for things. Everything else is in the same place. Nothing revamped there. I do, however, want to make a mention of something that might improve your performance and that is running in the background. I've talked about this in a previous video. I'll make sure to post a link in the description below so you can check it out, but it's the System76 Scheduler, which will help optimize the use of resources and can direct extra resources by scheduling them to particular applications. Again, if you want to learn more about that, you can check it out in the description below. Now to tie all this together, I know we're left with the same kind of desktop here. I believe it's going to remain the same even when we get Cosmic Desktop, the Rust-based version. What I do want to tell you is they will be re redesigning some of the UI ever so slightly. I've actually checked that out in another video. Might as well leave you a link for that one too. If you're curious about what the potential Rust Cosmic Desktop will be looking like, and that's probably the number one thing I'm excited about. Hopefully in about a year, we will be getting that new desktop environment and we'll be able to use it in Pop, and it's gonna make Pop pop out even further from the other distributions. I'm quite excited about it, but that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos, Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.